and I'm a base, and we are enemies. Oh, <gasps> well, we're not really enemies. Yeah, that's true. It's all about how we react chemically. You see, as an acid, I really want to give protons away. Protons, who needs your protons? Get your protons here. Protons, I got more than I want. I don't need them anymore. And bases, we need protons. We'll do anything to get them. Uh, protons, are you getting protons away? I'll take some, I'll take some protons. You think that when you get these two together, you'd have some pretty great chemistry. But the truth is, when they're together, they often don't react. Whoa. That is, until water gets involved. Once you have water, acids and bases react. Wow. Here, take some protons. All your bases belong to us. <laughs> take some protons. I don't need more. I want more. I want more protons. Water is a solvent, allowing the chemical reactions to take place. <laughs> Depending on the strength of the acids and bases, that reaction can be mild. Would you like a proton? Oh, no, really, I could. Please, please take it. Oh, well, thank you, that's very generous. Have another. No, perhaps, maybe I will. Here's yes. one. Okay, which, um, maybe just one. But if the acids and bases are strong, the chemical reaction can be really extreme. <laughs> this is what's going on in the antacid tablet, and why, without water, nothing happens. Oh, water! Water! Come acid. on! What'd you do? Oh. <laughs> Last one. Lisa and I are maxing out our chemical-powered rocket not by making it bigger, but by making more of them. How many more? 400 caps all glued down, 400 antacid tablets, or part of, yep. all glued down, and they're glued on this fancy-pantsy spinning surface. Hmm. So we rotate this part upside down. We fill each container with a little water and snap it on underneath. This way, the antacid tablet and the water don't mix until we flip it back over. It also allows us time to snap them all on. Okay, ready? Ready. All right, 400 containers. Here we go. Let's do it. Once we flip the board back over, the reaction started taking place, building up carbon dioxide gas and increasing the pressure until... Whoa. Whoa. So high fives on that. Yep. That worked spectacularly. That was awesome. So we've done this. Let's go bigger. Let's go bigger. bigger. Oh, okay. Definitely. So let's go and we'll clean All this right. up afterwards. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Okay, let it go. Whoa. 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 Advanced materials in 60 seconds. Scientists and engineers are always coming up with new and advanced materials. Some are for spaceships and some are just for fun. I'll show you a few. Hold on. Like, um, oh, this. This is a thermochromic mug. It's cool right now, but if you add hot water, it changes color. Um, ooh, this spring is made out of nitinol wire. It's also called memory wire, and I'll show you why. The reason it's called that is because it's a metal that remembers its shape. This one remembers being straight. All I have to do is drop it in hot water, and it turns back into a straight wire. How cool is that? <laughs> Science! Oh, this is Ulexite. It's sort of a see-through rock, but it's made of perfectly aligned crystals. So it's not just see-through, but the image actually gets transmitted from one side of the rock to the other. Advanced materials are really cool. I can't wait to see what science comes up with next. It's time to talk about an amazing natural polymer. It is hagfish slime. Ugh. Um, still, well, hagfish. That's probably just an unfortunate name for the fish. I'm sure the fish itself doesn't. Ugh. Okay. So hagfish makes slime, apparently. When a hagfish is attacked by something that wants to eat it, like a shark or an eel, it secretes a tiny bit of a natural polymer. 
that's this little white bit right here at the end of this test tube. Now, it doesn't look like much right now, but it reacts with seawater. Watch this. Hagfish slime is very interesting to scientists because you start with just a tiny little bit and add seawater, and suddenly you have a lot of slime. Whoa. <laughs> this stuff is actually pretty cool. Hagfish slime is a natural polymer. It's made just the same as the other polymers out of long chains of molecules, but it's naturally produced by a living organism. And because it's naturally produced, that means it's biodegradable. Hagfish slime, that's pretty cool after all. <laughs> I ended up in the water again. Oh well, at least maybe Michaela made it. Ah! Oh, Michaela! Whoa, Phil! Are you okay? Are we still fixing the portal? Yeah, I oh, needed to tweak it just a little bit. It was a, <laughs> it's a little off again. Anyway, great to see you, Michaela, from the Ontario Science Center. You're gonna help me match up the mousetrap boat. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where's the boat? Uh, yeah, I don't have it. it. I thought it was gonna come through the portal. Um, it could be anywhere, really. I mean, just... <laughs> what? Oh, here it is. Okay, good. So here is the mousetrap boat. Check it out. So we got a mousetrap here, right? And you wind up the paddle wheel, and it goes. Yeah, right on. Awesome. So what do you think we should do in order to max this out? Uh, well, first idea, I'm just thinking more mousetraps. More mousetraps. So we just make a boat, and it has like 10 mousetraps on it. At least. Okay, great. Actually, I had mousetraps. I had mousetraps coming through the portal as well. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Okay, we're all right. Okay, so now we've got the mousetraps. We can start building. Let's collect them carefully, though. I don't know if they're... Initial thrust! Or oh, constant thrust! <laughs> What's the difference? It's all about power! <laughs> Uh-oh. Paper airplane initial thrust. It gets all... It gets all of it, it gets all of its thrust from my throw! Ha-ha! <laughs> Initial thrust! If you want constant thrust, you have to take the thrust with you, like this. There's a lot of cats in here. Initial thrust! Initial thrust! Initial thrust! All the energy is put into the beginning of the... All the energy is put into the beginning. If you want constant thrust, then the thing has to produce power while it's moving. Wind up car, constant thrust. Actual car? Yeah, that's constant thrust because you have an engine. Of course, not this car. This is this is a toy car. But but you know what I mean. Check out this fishing rod, and on it I have a lure with a hook. Now watch this. I cast it out, initial thrust. But then I use the reel and start winding it back in. Constant thrust, huh? Huh? Two thrusts in one. And now you know the difference between initial thrust and constant thrust. Hey! Huh, I caught a fish! Hey, hey! Oh, oh. Easy, kitty. Nice kitties. Easy, Ramona! <laughs> Oh, hello there. I, whoa, uh, uh, here's a fun science experiment you can do with science and friction together. Take two books, put them on top of each other, and pull them apart. Ooh, not too much friction. But if you take the books and you interleave some of the pages, maybe three or four parts, and try it again, pull them apart, they're a little harder to pull apart. That's because the friction for more pages touching each other actually starts to add up. So, what if we were to take two books with a lot of pages and very carefully and meticulously take each page individually, one at a time, and overlay each one and go back and forth? These are two books completely shuffled together. The elastic band is actually just to hold the covers together. All right. So, now, the friction between all of these pages, when I try to pull it apart, makes it 
pretty much impossible. Now, there's two things going on here. First of all, when you start to pull the books apart, the pages start to stick together because they squeeze together because you're pulling and they're squeezing. And the fact that there's so many pages sticking together, the friction builds up to a degree that is actually very impressive. But don't take my word for it. Let's max it out. Here is another two books, elastic just to hold the covers. This one clamped to the wall, and I'm gonna pull this one. <laughs> Science! Still don't believe me? Well, let's max it out some more. Two books, all the pages layered together, held together only by friction, suspended over a giant bat of slime. Now, <laughs> let's see how much faith I have in science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Friction, yeah! Okay, okay, oh no. Okay, now to get down. Okay, hold on. And then... <laughs> science! <laughs> that was close.